welcome back and now this is part 2 of the discussion of case where we have information about 12 samples in the first part we discussed about how to construct a mean chart from the sample information and now we are going to discuss how to construct a range chart from the information about samples we have information about 12 samples and these are the sample points and as we can see that the sample size is 5. Now to draw mean chart as well as range chart, we should have sample ranges and sample range is nothing but the difference between the highest sample value and the lowest sample value H minus L. So I have already written the sample ranges. So this is the first step for solving a problem where we have sample information and want to construct a range chart is to find out the sample range H minus L, highest sample value minus lowest sample value. Okay, sample size is 5 and on the basis of this sample size of 5, from the table we can find out the two constants that is D4 and D3. To find out the upper control limit we should have D4 and to find out the lower control limit we should have D3. For sample size 5, these are the values. I have already discussed in my second lecture how to find out D4 and D3, take the table in the first column find out the sample value 5 and go through that row at the last of the say table there are D values and since that value D3 is 0 the LCL will be 0 but how first of all calculate upper control limit that is D4 into R bar and we know what is R bar it is mean of all the sample ranges total of sample range is 716 divided by number of samples 12 so the mean range comes to 59.7 D4 2.115 into 59.7 gives us 126.2 that is rounded off value up to one decimal please central line is okay mean of the range is 59.7 lower control limit is D3 into R bar and for sample size 5 D3 is 0 so 5 into, uh, sorry, 0 into 59.7 comes to 0. So the horizontal axis itself becomes the lower control limit. Most of the time, in case of range chart, the lower control limit comes to 0 because in most of the, say, textbook sums, the sample size is given or taken as 5. That's why it happens. And the safest thing is, range can never be negative so in case of lower control limit being zero no sample point can be below the lower control limit so in case of this kind of range chart the process can the rather the conclusion that the process is not under control can be arrived at only if any one or more sample ranges are greater than the upper control limit okay leave it now first of all if we want to find out, rather draw the range chart on the horizontal axis, there will be 12 samples, 1 to 12. But on vertical axis, what is the lowest value we need? And I can see that it is 36. But 0 is below 36, 0 is the starting point, but next lowest is 36 so we can pull the vertical axis and we can start from say 35 but what is the highest value and highest value is our upper control limit 126.2 so we should go say up to 130 so on vertical axis we need to take the values from 30 to 130 quite longer 21 centimeters will be needed and on horizontal as I said and we know sample numbers 1 to 12 only. So let me try to draw a sketch of a range chart for this case.
Oh no. It is quite tedious. I'm very sorry. Okay. It is zero, it is thirty. Oh sorry, it is thirty-five, not thirty. Thirty-five. 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, 125, 130, and 135. It is not easy task to draw this kind of chart on board. Sample range. Okay, 35. 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, 125, oh, oh, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, Then sample numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now first of all, always draw the control limits because uh, while checking the university examination papers, I have many a times checked papers where the students. <laughs> Yes, forgotten to draw the control limits and direct plotting of the sample points. This kind of error may happen in a hurry. So, take care. Okay, yes, lower control limit is zero. So, vertical axis itself is our lower control limit. And central line is at 59.7. 59.7. That means almost at 60. Almost, not exact 60. Central line for our chart 60. Okay, sorry. Please take utmost care while drawing the chart on the graph paper because in millimeters we have to measure the values. This is central line for R. This is 59.7. Okay, now upper control limit is far, 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 far. 126.2. Hmm. Okay, dotted line. Upper control limit of R that is 126.2. Okay, now what happens with the sample points? Sample number 1, 45. Sample number 2, 48. Uh, 2 millimeters below 50. Yes. Sample number 3, 62. That means 2 millimeters above 60. Sample number 4, 48, again 2 millimeters below 50. Yes. Sample number 5, it is 36, only 1 millimeter above 35. Sample number 6, it is 81, 1 millimeter above 80. Sample number 7, 78. 78 means 2 millimeters below 80. Uh, number 8, 42. 42 means 2 milli, just 2 millimeters above 40. Sample number 9, it is 69. 69 means 1 centimeter, just 1 centimeter below 70. Sample number 10, 84. 84 means... Uh, just 1 millimeter below 85 or 4 millimeters above 80. Sample number 11, again 48. Just 2 millimeters below 50 or 1, 3 millimeters above 45. Okay. And the last value is 75. Exact 75. Okay. The only point with the value matching with her scale. Yes. So this is the situation. And as we can see, all the sample points are within upper control limit and lower control limit. Very easy observation. 
all the simple points are between the upper control limit and the lower control limit. So conclusion would be the process is under control. Okay, now let me state a very important thing that it is not necessary to interpret mean chart or x bar chart until the range chart indicates the process variability is under control. So theoretically we can say that first draw the range chart. If range chart shows that the process is under control then only go for interpreting the mean chart because in case of range chart it is very hard to find the process is not under control kind of conclusion because of the constant values of D4 and D3 this kind of situation is there and mostly the sample size of 5 is taken size is kept to 5 and so many numbers can you can take rather instead of 10 or 12 you can go for very large number of samples but the sample size is restricted because of the calculation of or these kind of constant values okay so it is not necessary to interpret the mean chart until the range chart indicates the process variability is under control so here the range chart shows that the process is under control we need to interpret the mean chart which we have already interpreted in the pre uh, previous lecture and we concluded that the process is not under control so ultimately we can broadly conclude for this sample study and for this process that the process is not under control i hope this lecture proves to be useful to you to understand the process of constructing the range chart from the information about the samples don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel p r a s h a n t p u w a r don't forget to like my this lecture and all other lectures please also suggest my channel my lectures to all your classmates schoolmates college students seniors juniors and other friends 